All right, not to be excluded. The women are taking over this sport as well, baseball and softball, and we got one of the best in the business. A.J. Andrews, you've probably seen her on Play Ball, or you might have caught her at LSU where she was an All-American, gold glover, doing everything. A.J., welcome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, I thought but, you were gonna keep going. I was. You know, I was gonna. There's a lot on your, a lot there. on that resume, no <laughs> doubt about it. So my first question for you: When did you start thinking about broadcasting? I started thinking about broadcasting my senior year in college. I originally went to school at LSU. I wanted to be a sports agent, so I thought. But I always did, I had so many interviews. I was always the person that they picked to do them because I was always so excited to do them, energetic. I had a lot of fun being on camera and I did some a media class at school and I really enjoyed it. And so it was my senior year, honestly, towards the end at the SEC tournament at, that was held at LSU that year. And they had the whole setup and they came up to me. I had an interview and they said, AJ, you'd be really good at this. I was like, you know, I would, huh? And uh, that kind of spiraled into me thinking more about making this a career rather than something that I just enjoy. And I went back to school and got my master's degree in mass communications to pursue my, my new goal of becoming an on-air talent. Well, how would you encourage somebody else who might be sitting in that situation trying to get started? How would you encourage them? I would say do not stop. You know, I felt like as soon as I got out of college, I immediately thought, well, of course, I'm going to have all these opportunities. I played softball. So why wouldn't anyone want to hear what I have to say? I'm taking this track and I'm going to be hired immediately. And it was not that easy. And what I began to do was say, I'm not going to wait for this opportunity. I'm not going to sit and wait around for a seat at the table. I'm going to go create my own table. And I began to create my own content. I began to create my own shows. And I had a really popular mm. show called My Way with AJ in college that I created where I would go around and work with different athletes at LSU. And that got the attention of a lot of different media platforms. And that's when really things started to take off for myself when I began to do it for myself rather than waiting for someone. Now, we're seeing a lot more African-American women in sports, but you picked a sport that doesn't have a lot of African-Americans, period, men or women, in baseball. So how different has that been for you maybe in your conversation with friends that are doing other sports that look like you? It is different because it's just a little bit of a different culture, I would say, as far as what it is you can bring about and how it is to kind of present yourself. And maybe you're not so sure that people will understand how you're coming across or having to be uh, very concise or having to speak a certain way. You know, I mean, these are these are things that African Americans, African Americans have had to worry about in every field, um, really trying to abide by a certain stature that we are held to that other people are not. And, um, you know, you see it a little bit. You could see it a little bit more in a sport where you don't see as many black athletes playing. Um, and, you know, those conversations are just a little bit, it's a little bit different as far as how you can present yourself, perhaps. But um, to me, it's, it's something you work at to be authentic, to realize that you don't have to change yourself for anyone else, regardless of who your audience is. And while, you know, it could take time to do so, I think it's important to remember that. So let, let's talk just on the field now. How different is softball than baseball? And how does... How do you handle the credibility when people look, well, she played softball, and yet you're still being able to bring it home about baseball? I see them very similar, but I'm curious what some of your reactions have been. <laughs> I, I, feel, I call them uh, couch coaches, the individuals that have things to say about that. Those are people that have never played the game. They have no idea what they're talking about. They sit on the couch and have these conversations to say that softball players couldn't discuss baseball. Because if you had gone out and you really experienced the game or you really know the game, you'd understand just how similar the two are in regard to the preparation on the field, off the field. Essentially, the only differences are the size of the field, the ball, and maybe a couple rules when it comes to base running. And so at the end of the day, it really is very much the same game. And in order to be great at this game, you have to put in the same amount of preparation, whether it's softball or baseball. And so you know the mentality. The failure objective there is there in both sports. It's a, it's a game of failure, baseball and softball. 
we both have averages, right? You hit above 300, you're considered a great player. There's no other sport, baseball or softball, where you can fail seven out of 10 times and be considered a great athlete. So, you know, I think to that regard and being able to speak to my experiences, it's very similar to a baseball player's experiences. And uh, I think that relatability should be respected. Uh, and just the hardships that you go through as a softball player and baseball player really are no different in order to reach that success. I love that. I was getting ready to ask you, what would your advice be I got two daughters at home that are watching you right now, and I'm sure they're saying, I, I want to do what she does. So there's more than just my two sitting at home. There's other people sitting out there as well. So we'll end it on this. What is your advice to somebody who looks like you or maybe doesn't look like you that's just a female out there saying, I, I want to get into this? What would your advice be? My advice would be to any woman that wants to take up space in an area where they don't see a lot of people that look like them is to walk in with so much command and confidence and know that you deserve to be in that space. Uh, there is nothing that you cannot do. And when you think to the word failure, I like to apply it. It's the first attempt in learning. You are on your way to being as successful as you want. Every no is just getting you closer to your next yes. Do not be discouraged. You will hear no's before you hear yes. I heard so many no's, but when you think of a no as just a, the stepping stone or a ladder that's just getting you higher to a higher level of success, it actually encourages you. You get more excited for those no's because you know you're getting closer for that yes. Um, but know that you are worthy. 100% is something that I think is important. Know that you are worthy and you are where you are supposed to be. There's no one that can intimidate you without your permission. You cannot be intimidated without their permission. So make sure that you are taking control of your life, your destiny, and move forward and be fabulous. You deserve it. You got me fired up. And I know our viewers are fired up. Thank you, AJ. This was phenomenal. Appreciate you joining us and telling us your story and encouraging so many people that are coming behind you. Thank you for being a trailblazer. Thank you.